But I'm underneath the juniper tree. They forgot to tell me that. They forgot to tell me what to do after I had prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed, but nothing broke. Nothing changed. Nothing happened. They told me what to do when God answers, but they forgot to tell me what to do when I can't hear him, and I can't sense him, and I can't feel him. They forgot to tell me, in fact, they went beyond that. They said, if I'm not hearing him, and I'm not feeling him every second, I wasn't saved. And so I was trying to walk by faith, but I was also being indoctrinated. And if you really walk by faith, and you don't feel him, or see him, or touch him, that you're probably not right with him. And I was trying to search my heart, and I wasn't finding sin. And I was saying, God, I don't understand. They said that I must be sinning. And all will take you through a valley of weariness. It'll take you through a place where you can question your very existence. A man that knows what he's called to do tomorrow or yesterday will wonder today, who am I? What am I? God, what did you call me for? <laughs> Folks always say, why, why, do you just, why do you want to talk the Bible? Because, Brother Ferris, I needed Elijah. I, they didn't teach me in the pulpit, so I needed James to tell me that Elijah was a man just like me. I needed to know that in those days when I couldn't feel it, I wasn't lost. I searched my heart. It was... There was no uh, unknown sin in my life, and I was walking, and man, it gets lonely. But I keep walking, and you keep moving, and people are trying to console you, but it just doesn't work. And a man of God preaches, and it just doesn't hit. They sing and it just doesn't get it done. And then we begin to wonder, am I even saved? Do I even belong? Maybe I don't belong anymore. Weary, 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 weary. I don't want to live anymore, he said. away my life. That's his words verbatim. Oh Lord. He said it is enough now. First Kings 19.4. It is enough now. I've had enough. It's enough. I can't take one more thing. I can't walk another He sat down and he says, God, I can pray fire down. I can pray rain. I can outrun chariots. Now I'm asking you to take my life. I didn't come to preach on weariness. I come to preach on the remedy. For the weary. I'll talk to you about some practical things and then I'm going to talk to you about the real solution. You see, I'm talking to a lot of people today. I'm talking to a house full of people. You're starting to lose your edge and you don't even know why. You're starting to react in ways that normally you wouldn't react. Some of you men are talking to your wife in ways that you know are not right. Some of you ladies are talking to your man in a way that you know is not right. Some of us parents are, are treating our children in a way that we know is not right. 
We're becoming sharp with them around us. We're becoming sharp with our families, with our children, with those that we love. And some of us are withdrawing from people that we know love us. And we're beginning to hide inside of a cause. We're beginning to hide in a corner and say it out of sight, out of mind. But that's not true. Just because you're hiding in your closet at your house, it doesn't mean that those that love you aren't thinking about you. You may be out of sight, but somebody's hurting because they need you. They love you. They care about you. And when you get in that closet and the devil starts saying nobody cares, nobody loves, I rebuke the devil in Jesus' name. There is somebody that loves you. There is somebody that cares about you. And if you won't believe me, you had better believe that God so loved the world. He loves you. He loves you tonight. The solution. There's always a solution. There is no temptation taking you, but such as is common unto man. But God is faithful, who will not uh, suffer you to be tempted above that which ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. He says, I'm not going to let you go through something that's going to destroy you. I'm not going to let you carry something that you will not make it out of. And so I want you to, I want you to assess what I'm telling you. If you're here and you're under a heavy load, and you're saying, I don't know if I can get my foot up one more step. I need you to know that God has a remedy. God has an escape route. And you got to hold on tight. Because it may not come today, but it will come. You cannot quit. You cannot stop. You cannot lay down. You cannot backslide. You cannot throw in the towel. God is faithful. He sat down. He sat down. Number one, in the most practical sense, if you're physically tired, sit down. Take a break. I'm a double barrel hypocrite. You might as well say it. I'm trying, my better. Sometimes you just need to take a deep breath. Shut the stupid cell phone off. Put the iPad away. Turn the television off. Turn the radio off. Or put on some good, uplifting Christian music. And just sit in a chair with the Word of God. And let it speak to you while your physical man begins to get strengthened. Because the truth is, if you're on the verge of burnout, you're not going to bless anybody. Somebody help me preach for a minute. Almost made a statement Friday night that I'd rather wear out than burn out. But when I went to say that, which has been stated a thousand times, the Holy Ghost checked me. I sat down with Pastor Greg yesterday and had an incredible season of fellowship. And the Lord has spoke the same thing to him. You see, there's not just two options. The two options is not burn out or rust out. The option is be wise. If I'm going to go for the long haul, I'm going to learn to sit down every now and then. I'm going to learn to enjoy life every now and then. Or I will not make it. I'd like to talk to the men and women of God in this house. Those that labor, those that toil, those that teach Sunday school and cook and clean and the things that you do. You cannot wear out. We're not here for the day. We're not here for this moment only. We are here to do something that's going to last eternally. And there's going to come a point that you need to sit down for a minute. Take a deep breath. Drink a glass of ice water. And let God minister to you physically. That's the answer to the physical side of things. There's a solution for the external difficulties. James said, my brother, count it all joy when you fall into divers' temptations. We need to start counting. We're so negative. We're so negative. I'm a realist. Oh, you're negative. You're a pessimist. Because as a Christian, if you want to get real as a Christian, you ought to be walking around saying, I can do all things through Christ and strength. But that's getting real right now. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ that strengthens me. That's getting real. Getting real is, yes, there's a valley of the shadow of death in front of me. And yes, I've got to go through it. But yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because thou art with me. That's getting real right there. But instead of us thinking on a positive note, instead of putting Christ in the equation, we begin to talk negatively. I don't know if I can make it. I don't know if I'll last. I don't know how much longer I can go. I'll tell you how long you can go in the name of 
of Jesus. You're going to make this race all the way to the end. Because he's not just the author. He is the finisher. He's got a plan. He will walk with you. He will talk with you. He will give you strength. He will help you in your time of weariness. Count it all joy. He says we're also to seek peace with all men. Be careful not to let a root of bitterness spring up. And see, I know that enemy is to, the enemy is trying to do that. He's trying to cause us to have a breakdown of peace between the brethren. And it's not just that he wants division in the house. He wants bitterness in the heart. If he can get bitterness in the house, it will spring roots and begin to choke out everything else. And you say, I ain't hurt nobody but myself. That's nonsense. You belong to a body. And when bitterness gets inside the arm and it begins to make roots, it's going to spread. You got to be careful, brothers and sisters. You got to get your head on right. The enemy is very cunning. He's very subtle. And we got to follow peace with all men. Holiness. Holiness with all men. Or else I will not see the Lord. That's, that's the second thing. We got to learn to count. And we need to learn to follow peace. And we need to learn to follow wholeness with those that are around us. God help us. Jesus gives us even more practical advice. In the fifth chapter, Matthew, verse 44 and 45, he said, I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. He says, if you're going to be my child, if you're going to be a child of the Father, you've got to learn to take a licking and keep on ticking. You've got to learn to go through persecution. You've got to learn to be lied on and talked about and ripped up. And instead of allowing bitterness in your heart, if you're really a child of the Father, you have the ability to begin to pray for them. Say, God, would you help them? Would you help them? Well, not only would you help them, God, would you lay your hands on them and bless them? Would you bless my enemies, oh God? Would you help them? And you'll find, my brothers and sisters, that that is therapeutic. Oh, God, help me preach a little while. The solution for spiritual fatigue. Lay aside every weight. Sin does so easily beset us. You need to search your hearts. Some of you have no peace because you have sin in your life. Some of you don't have any peace because you've got weights in your life. They need to be cast off. Something happens to Elijah. And this, this, this is right here. This is what's had me stirred up. And you know, to be honest, I preached so long, I probably need to get to the altar here. But he lays down, according to verse 5, and he goes to sleep. He lays down, and he, he goes to sleep. He's prayed a prayer, he says, I'd rather die if I live. Weariness is talking to you. Fatigue is talking. I woke up this morning and fatigue was the conduit through which the enemy began to talk to me. And I said to myself, God, you knew exactly what we needed this morning as always. And even while the singing was going and while the anointing was flowing, I could feel this heaviness. This is my heartbeat. You. This isn't what I do. This is what I am. It's not my occupation. I don't wake up in the morning and say I need to pastor today. I just wake up, my feet hit the floor, and I do it. It's like being a man. I don't have to try to be a man. It's just what I am. But sometimes as a man of God, we get weary. Elijah is a man of God. 
He belongs to God. No one doubts that. No one questions. But he's under a tree now. He says, I'm dying. Somebody in this house today. He 